Hello, my creative friends. I'm Kara Blichinich, and today we're going to take a quick look at Illustrator's expand command. What is it? Why is it? And how is it different than expand appearance? In a nutshell, the expand and expand appearance commands turns an object's appearance attributes like strokes and fills or various effects, patterns, gradients into individually editable objects in their own right. I like to think of it like a fairy godmother that grants wishes and makes your artwork real. Let me show you what I mean. Here we have a simple circle and it's got a purple fill and a pink stroke. And I made a copy of it over here. If we go into outline mode, we can see that these are the same. There's just a simple circle and we see it has a stroke and a fill. But if we take this one and we come up to the object menu and choose expand, it's gonna ask us if we wanna expand the fill or the stroke or both, we'll click okay. And now this is something entirely different. Instead of a single path with a stroke and a fill, we now have a group. And if we crack open the group by double clicking, we can see that we have two different shapes. One was made from the stroke and the second shape was made from the fill. And if we go into outline mode, now we see just the single path here. And now we can see that we have a single path here and we have a compound path here. Let's take a look and see what happens if we expand gradients. So again, in outline mode, we just have a simple path with a gradient fill. And now if we come up to object, and you'll notice at the moment, expand appearance is not available. We'll get to that in a minute. So let's click expand. And because this has a gradient fill, we're gonna expand the fill. And down here, we can tell Illustrator whether we want to expand that gradient into a mesh, which we could then edit, or in this case, I'm gonna to choose to specify a certain number of objects. The higher the number of objects here, the smoother and nicer looking that gradient is gonna be. So if we click okay, it doesn't look like anything happened, but if we go into outline mode, we've got this wild effect going on. And if we drill into this group, we can actually start clicking individual shapes. So you can see that Illustrator took our gradient fill and broke it up into individual little long skinny rectangles. And you can see that their fill color varies over here. So if I choose one from up here, it's got a darker red. And down here we see that it's yellow. So let's talk about why sometimes it says expand and sometimes it says expand appearance. Essentially, they're the same thing except that when you have an object, in this case, a circle that has an effect applied to it. So we can see here in the appearance panel that I've got a pucker and bloat applied to this shape. Let's look at outline mode and we see that these are both indeed just circles. So this little pucker and bloat effect is kind of like a virtual, it's like a filter almost, and it's filtering that circular path into this flower shape. But if we look in outline mode, we know that that flower shape is not actually real. The path is not actually that flower shape. So in this case, instead of expanding a stroke or fill, we are expanding the appearance. We're expanding this pucker and bloat effect. So this is where I mean that it's kind of like the fairy godmother, because if we come over to object, we see expand is not available, and instead it says expand appearance. And when we choose that, we can see that we now have paths around what was previously more like a filtered effect. So if we go into outline mode, we can see that here we still have a circle, and here we have the expanded effect or appearance. Now this also works if you are using brushes. So here, once again, we have a circle 
This time it's been stroked with a scatter brush that I made actually from this shape here. So if we look in outline mode again, we just have circles. But if we take this one and we go to object, and again, it says expand appearance because this time we're talking about a scatter brush that's been applied to it. So we'll click on that. And now we have individual little shapes and they are editable. So if I wanted to grab my direct selection tool, I could come in here and I could move individual instances or tweak the paths in whatever way I want. One thing that's really worth knowing is that once you expand an object or an appearance, while you gain some editing options, you also lose some editing options. So for example, you can't go back and change the pucker and bloat settings, or you can't go back and change the stroke weight. So depending on what you're doing, it can be a really good idea to make copies of the unexpanded artwork that you can return to if you decide you wanna make changes. Okay, so why are we doing all of this? Well, sometimes we might expand something if we're trying to build with it. So for example, here we have a circle <laughs> and a separate object that is this uh, just line here with a stroke on it. If we wanted to build a shape from these, we could use the Shape Builder tool and it will recognize these halves of the circle. But if we select both of these and let's apply an effect here. So we'll go to Effect, Distort and Transform. We'll put a simple zigzag on here. And let's say we're trying to now use the Shape Builder to build something from this. And as we roll over this, Illustrator is not recognizing the zigzags that we just added. It's only seeing the straight line. So I can't cut out this circle, for example, using this zigzag shape, unless we first expand it. So if we come over here and we'll select just the zigzag shape and we'll choose object, and again, because this has the zigzag on it, we're expanding the appearance. We're not expanding the actual stroke yet. So now we'll expand appearance. So now we still have a path, not a closed shape, but now the path actually is a zigzag, whereas over here, it's even tricky to select because <laughs> clicking on the zigzag does nothing. You have to click on the path. So this one is still actually a line with a wiggle applied to it. And now we have the actual path in the shape of the zigzag. You'll notice if we select both of these pieces and I go back to the shape builder, now it will recognize the bottom versus the top, but it doesn't recognize the stroke or the zigzag itself as its own shape because it's not a closed shape. It is a path with a stroke applied to it. So this is where we would then, like let's say we wanna cut out the, the stroked part from the circle, then we would want to select the zigzag that we previously expanded the appearance of, and now we'd wanna go to Object Expand to turn the stroked open path into a closed shape with a fill. And now if we select that and the circle and we go back to our shape builder, now we could punch out the zigzag itself. And finally, let's take a look at text. Essentially, this so this is live text here, all of these are live text, but it, there are times when you need to outline the text and essentially expanding the text is the same as creating Outline. So if we select this instance here and we choose Object, Expand, and we choose this version and we choose Type, Create Outlines, if we take a look in Outline Mode, they are the same. So sometimes you might want to do this if you're sending a file to someone and you don't want to risk getting error messages because they don't have the font, you can turn it into outlines or expand it to prevent any errors from popping up. 
So there you have it, friends. The expand and expand appearance commands in Illustrator are a crucial part of any workflow. And like any good fairy godmother, they help bring your artistic visions to life. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy illustrating. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.